Okay, today we're going to be checking push rod length. So one of the last steps in this build, um, I need to actually uh, measure and acquire some some custom push rods because I'm I'm going with a a really custom very uh, very large cam <clears throat> right at 660 lift. Um, I'm also going with a race style lifter here, which is a 2116 LSR. So these are slow leak down uh, link bar style lifters, which are really nice. Um, the 2110s are more common, a uh, very popular Johnson lifter. Uh, just with the specs of this build and, you know, the, the horsepower rating, um, you know, probably around 1100 wheel, 1150. Um, you know, I want to keep it semi-reliable um, but I want to ensure that the internals are, are up to par so that's why I chose to upgrade um, to these 2116 LSR um, lifters so and they are very nice um, one of the things to note is when you measure with with lifters especially you know these uh, <clears throat> race style lifters they'll have some circlips inside of there uh, be careful you don't have the push rod sort of rest on the edge of the circlip. It can tend to catch, and you'll be off, of course, with your push rod height, and that's not good. Um, and that's also why I always recommend with race motors that you at least uh, measure, you know, all cylinders uh, is, was my advice. Um, you know, sort of like degreeing a cam. It's ensuring that your height on your intake and exhaust is even across all cylinders. You know, why not? It's just, it's just time, right? It's not, not really that lengthy of a process. Um, or at the very minimum, check four corners. You know, I, just checking one cylinder to me, no way, um, especially on, you know, a high dollar build for sure. Um, so I'm going to set these lifters aside and I'm going to just quickly show, you know, how I do this. Um, it's a, it's very common. There's so many YouTube videos out there on it. Um, I actually, in most push rods, uh, stock are around 7.8. Uh, stock for LT4 Gen 5s is 7.850. These are 3.8s with a, a 080 wall thickness, dual tapered um, push rod. So that's my, my stock push rod there. Um, I'm going to set that aside and show you that um, because these Johnson 2116Rs, they're, they're a race style lifter, they're a tad bit shorter than my my stock or most common ones so my comp cam 7702 push rod link tool um just is under what i needed it to be so um i had to upgrade to the 7703 which is a 7.8 to 8.8 so that's that's of course plenty of height there um now i've already uh taken the liberty of measuring all the cylinders so i i know what it's what the height is but i'm going to show you here on this uh comp cams push rod length checker tool that it has a set of lines of course and i know other videos have shown this but when you go one rotation it's uh it's just 050 so two rotations would be 7.9 it's not rocket science very simple um and when i'm done i actually use a, a digital caliper just to ensure that i have exact uh length measurements um all right so i'm gonna go just uh, i think i had a couple turns out i know this is a hair short so i'm gonna sit this down in and ensure that it's seated and you can spin it i mean you you really want to ensure that that's seated down in the lifter um so uh another thing is um with the top cover out of the engine you can see right down to the to the lifter lobes, um, I mean to the rollers and the cam lobes, so you can actually see um, the push rod. I'm sorry, you can see the the roller sit on the base circle, which is the back side or the lowest diameter point of the cam, um, and that's what you want. You want to measure lash with that lifter lobe sitting on the back side of the high point on the cam. Um, so to do that, you can watch um, the lifter. And I can look right through, and right there is the base circle. I'm going to come up. Now I can see that lifter rolling up on the top of that camshaft lobe. And I'm going to let it roll all the way back down. And I can see the intake coming up now. But now I can see it going to the opposite side right there. So now I know I'm on the base circle of the high point on the cam. Um, so, and that's what you want when setting lash. You want that push rod essentially seated 
all the way down as far as it'll go. Um, now to check lash, you want to uh, put this rocker on, which the Gen 5 uh, and in other rockers, of course, have a flat side and they have a rolled side. Now it's kind of common sense the flat side goes to the pedestal. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I am glad that I just said that because the flat side actually goes to the bolt. Um, that is that I'm really glad I got that backwards because that is how easy it is to mess up. Um, so you want to put the 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 uh, the flat side up where the the nut actually uh, seats. Um, so you can see that I've got some play here, right? So what that play is called is lash. Um, so we know that the push rod is too short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to, uh, let's do four turns here. All right. One, two, three, four. Four turns there. And be careful. This uh, threaded tip uh, can spin. It's not very solid. Um, you can put some tape around it if you want. But, uh, you know, I just, I just try to be careful when I'm seating it in there. Um, okay. Um, now there we go. Um, with four turns on there, I can see that now I'm right, it looks right at zero lash, almost on the dot. Um, let's put this nut on. Tighten that up. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking essentially at zero lash on with the, the valves. The, the valve stem tip to the, the tip of the rocker and the back side of the push rod to the back side tip of the rocker arm. So you want zero play. And when I tighten this down, usually you want to go about a quarter turn. And you can see now, yes, I'm right, right at the uh, perfect height there. There's no play. I have, I've went uh, a quarter to a half turn, which has seated the rocker firmly on the pedestal. Um, you can see there's no lash there. So uh, it's really, it's not more complicated than that. Um, just uh, like I said, just take your time. Don't make silly mistakes like having the rocker, um, you know, the, the center part upside down where the flat side and the rolled side is. Um, if you notice the rolled side uh, seats into that, uh, into the cylinder head. Um, so I am, I'm really glad I said that because it is that simple or that easy to just quickly make a mistake. Um, and generally speaking, just so you know, um, I, I've actually took measurements of both sides and there really wasn't a difference, um, which is kind of odd. I thought there'd be a little difference there, but, um, but it still came out to right at 80. So, um, anyway, I'm going to take the rocker off. Next step is pulling the push rod out right and with some light we're right there at uh, four turns I believe so here uh, what I like to do is to take a digital caliper and uh, just ensure that we're straight and let's uh, if I could keep my hands steady here we can see that we're 8.005 inches so that is the length of the push rod. So the tool is really uh, is really pretty accurate. So most people can get away with just using the lines on the tool. So I'm four turns out, um, you know, 050. So seven, nine would be two turns. Four turns would be 80. So, uh, so push rod length with zero lash, pretty simple, is eight inches. Um, now there's one more key uh, factor or number that comes into play and that would be the lifter preload so each lifter has a specific preload <clears throat> and most lifters actually um, have a higher preload than a 0.035 that's a fairly small preload and that's probably because it's more of a race lifter um, but there's a variance of 0.010 inches off of that so we can go 0.025 all the way up to 0.045 <clears throat> um, because i had you know uh and basically a firm, you know, my, just the way I feel and the way I measure lash, um, there was really a, a good, uh, 
zero lash tolerance um you know with with the eight inch there was there was good tension on the valve stem tip um i chose to go with a preload of 0.025 um i actually i chose a 8030 initially but uh i could not get an 8030 cut um vengeance racing uh, is where I get most of my parts from, except, of course, Texas Speed. Um, but uh, the 8030s uh, could not be ordered. They couldn't be cut. So I chose to go down to an 8025, which will give, me, um, will give me plenty of preload, where there's no walking on the valve stem tip. Um, you know, with, with, with the LT, uh, with the Gen 5s, you can see that they cut this um, rounded, you know, curve section, like a uh, concave section into this uh, pedestal, and that prevents walking completely. I mean, you don't have to set the side-to-side -side lash at all. I mean, there's no adjustments there. Um, you just worry about setting the lash from the, from the valve stem or from the pushrod link. So pretty simple uh, on these Gen 5 LT motors. Um, so that is, uh, that's how you check pushrod length, and... Again, I, I would recommend that you do that on all cylinders. Um, I did that on all cylinders on mine. And here is uh, generally what you order uh, is a 3 8 push rod. And standard links generally are around 7 8. Um, stock Gen 5 LT4s are 7, 7 8 5 zeros. Um, wall thickness is uh, recommended a .080 wall thickness. Um, and they're dual tapered uh, push rods. So... Um, so these were the, the standard push rods, and of course um, the new push rods are a tad bit longer, um, but uh, will be the same wall thickness and uh, same three eighths inch style uh, push rod. So that covers uh, how I set lash. I, I personally like doing it with the with the top cover off, where I can really inspect. Um, that would be my tip if you can visually see the rollers on the cam lobes. Um, you know, there are ways of watching one exhaust or, you know, one valve close, which means the, in, you know, opposite side is on the uh, base circle. You know, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way to do that. But again, that's, that's not, you're not seeing exact measurements or exact visuals as you would seeing that uh, lifter sitting on the back of that cam load. So that's, that's why I prefer doing it that way. Um, you know, I don't build motors <laughs> every week. Um, I'm kind of a DIYer, so I, I personally like to do it the simple way, the, the KISS method, honestly. Um, so that's it. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out while, while we got a video here is I like these Texas Speed dual springs. Um, they're very, very nice. They, they actually um, have a concave and a convex um, titanium retainer, which I think is is unique. I, I really haven't seen this setup before, um, but I like it. <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure what the performance benefits are, are to that, but I know there, there had to be some reason why. So if anybody can comment on why, uh, why they are convex and concave, um, I haven't reached out to Texas Speed, but I know that they're very unique. Um, I'm usually just had one style retainer, um, and, uh, and that's what I went with, but I thought these were these were very unique, and again, uh, Texas Speed is, is uh, their, their 660 lift, a um, little above that, dual springs. Um, they have a patent-pending um, valve stem seal, which I really like. It's more of a, uh, a, a factory-style um, seal, which uh, to me are better than the, the little cap seals, which I've used on the same motor before. Um, they have a, a just a bit the spring essentially seats them down and and holds them in place, which is really nice um, but uh, But yeah, I, I really I like these uh, dual springs and we'll see how they work out but um, and one last thing I'll touch on is I do have ARP fasteners really throughout the motor um, but I like these rocker arm ARP studs um, they're very nice in just hanging the rockers in place um, if I would recommend ARP studs on any motor, of course, head studs, that's a no-brainer. Um, rocker arm studs, and of course, after battling and banging up my hands over and over on header installs, I would absolutely recommend the header 
uh, studs because they have a tapered end which lets you get the nut started on the threads uh, without sort of getting them cross threaded and you can just hang the headers and the gasket all at one time so um, ARP fasteners are really um, man wow I don't know what I would do without those though so, um, but that is it um, so if you will subscribe because I've got a lot more videos uh, soon which are going to be a lot more exciting the engine finally coming together uh, the engine should be going in the car this week and uh, and then we'll have uh, first crank up which is going to be really really exciting um, again this is almost six months or so six plus months in the making of getting this car torn down finding out the problems getting a new custom fully built billet internals 416 um, you know having the heads cleaned up um, just just all the work and, and all the, the parts and, and accessories that I've taken my time to really put together here, I'm hoping will um, will really pay off. So, um, But anyway, a lot of more exciting videos coming, and I uh, appreciate it uh, for anybody taking the time to watch. Thank you.